morning everybody, Victor here, check it out. I am on the side of the road in the Florida Keys right now, fishing a very special bridge. And the special thing about this bridge is there is a huge infestation of bull sharks here. We woke up super early this morning, headed to our local bait shop, got some shrimp. I got my man, Chad Gone Fishing, from my YouTube channel behind me. He gave me the meat call and said, Vic, you gotta get down here. I can't land any fish right now because there are so many bull sharks at this bridge. And this is our third annual bull shark catch clean cook. So let me walk you guys what we're doing the rest of the day or what we're gonna be doing. Say what's up, Chad. Hey, what's going on, guys? This right here, this is the king of the Florida Keys bridges. This is my man, Chad. And uh, nobody catches more fish than him on the bridges. I'm here all the time. And I, I heard the bull sharks are here hot and heavy. Yeah, huh? they're destroying me even this morning, just before Victor got here. So hopefully we can put to, uh, into one of them. And we got my man, Chef James, who's gonna help out in cooking the bull shark. Right now, the tide in the Florida Keys is incoming. So the water from the ocean is flushing into the Gulf of Mexico, so that side. And there's a driving bridge right there. We're on the fishing bridge, so if you can picture my line angle, I'm not gonna be able to land a shark on this side because the current's flowing that way. So the bull shark's just gonna cut me off on the bridge. So we gotta wait until the tide switches, but it's perfect because now we can try to catch our yellow jacks, our snapper, and whatever else bites until the tide switches to outgoing. Once the tide goes outgoing, that's when we're gonna do our bull shark catching cook. And we're about a mile and a half smack dab in the center of this bridge. So if we get one here, it is a long journey back to where we can land them. And the best thing to fish off the bridges, big fish, little fish, everything eats a live shrimp. It is the most universal bait you can fish out here. I like to hook them right there in the tail. Must add to a big gun. You see how nice and streamlined that is? It almost looks like a shrimp lure. Now basically we just cast it underneath the bridge pilings and we go on the down current side. So we just let that current kind of take our bait as far back down there as possible. Yellow jacks? Yeah, you want it? Throw it right here. They're right here. There's a school of them. Oh yeah, there's oh, a bull yeah, shark. He's on it. He's on it. You guys see the bull sharks They're already here. Whoa! It was on yours, it looked like. Phew. This one's lit up. A bull shark is not gonna get this because I'm gonna eat it. Another bridge treat, a porgy. Yeah, buddy, look at that. That is a porgy. And check out these teeth. He has teeth similar to a sheep's head and some of you guys out there what do i got is that a little mutton oh it's a little hogfish that's a cool catch from the bridge check it out this guy is way undersized but that is one of my favorite fish to just look at not even eat not even to catch just to look at these guys are so dang cool so all hogfish start out as females and the big ones turn to males look at how pretty that fish is with his tracers up there i'm gonna let him go because he's bleeding but very pretty fish right there nice one reason i love fishing these bridges is because the variety of species we already got a yellow jack on the deck it's caught a hogfish Chad caught yellowtails, jack crevels, mangrove snapper, mutton snapper, kuberas. There's so many different things you can catch. And the fact that it's accessible to everyone, you don't need a boat, you don't need to pay to get on the bridge, you just come out here and have a good time. You ready? Get in there. Oh, the shark's right there. Nope, I can't let you get him. I can't let him get him. Oh, yeah. Woo! Beautiful fish. Federally protected, but there is an abundance of them in the Keys. 
Very beautiful and healthy fish. Circle hook right in the corner of the mouth. And what I have to do just for him to survive is bring him down the bridge a little bit to release him. Right here seems good. We've seen all those sharks on him, so we don't want him to get eaten. So we'll go ahead and release him head first. Here it goes, guys. Boom, swim away nicely. Yeah, buddy. Oh, this not little. Yeah, buddy. All right. Nick's first yellow jack. Look at how pretty that is. That is a Florida Keys yellow jack. Unregulated, so delicious, and so underrated. A lot of people don't know about these fish. And in the winter time, so from like November through March, these guys are littered all across the bridges. They come in shallow from the offshore reefs. And that's one of the reasons all the bull sharks are here is to feed on these guys. If you see a lot of yellow jacks at the bridges or whatever area you're in, you're for sure going to see bull sharks. They're always on the schools of these guys. Keeper yellow jack from the bridge. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And not to mention, it's Dennis and I's one year anniversary, guys. A year ago today, I brought him onto the channel. And the first thing we ever filmed was yellow jacks on the bridge. Second thing we ever filmed was a bull shark catching cook. So it's it's a special day because it bring back, brings back a lot of memories and shows how far we've come together, you know? Bring a tear to a glass eye. <laughs> come on, get it in before the bull shark does. I don't know, this just feels good. Ah! Look at him fired up. These bull sharks are ruthless out here. Heck, if I was the jack, I'd rather be on the bridge than in the water right now. Speaking of one year anniversaries, not only have Dennis and I done this for the second year in a row, also been one year that I've been rocking the Waterland Coast. So you guys know fishing is my livelihood and I really depend on a good pair of sunglasses. I've been rocking the Waterland Coast for a year now and I can honestly say they are the best sunglasses I've ever worn. I've had Smith's, I've had Costa's, I've had a bunch of other brands. The glass on these is immaculate. You can see better. They don't get scratched like other glasses. Nothing delaminates. Um, I really like to wear something for a while before I really put my endorsement on it. And since it's the holidays, if you guys are looking for a gift for him or her, or your son or your daughter or whoever it may be, you guys can actually save 15% off using my code LANDSHARK. I'm gonna have a link below where you guys can use it at waterlinko.com. I rock the Millikan's blue glass. They got a bunch of different styles to choose from. They even have ladies sunglasses. Ladies, if you're watching, very, very impressed with this company. Owned by fishermen, they make them for fishermen, and they're just all around a great product. All right, guys, so the sharks have been worse than they've ever been this year. So usually I'm able to pull away my bait away from the sharks, but there's like five or six sharks that you see, so that means there's probably double the amount that you don't see. They're swirling around trying to get your bait, and you basically are trying to maneuver a three to five pound fish with a rod like this size away from a bull shark and you have no chance. So there's really nothing you can do but get lucky. These bull sharks are out of control. I'm telling you, I've fished the last three weeks and I've had five or six significant fish taken away from me because of the bull sharks. So today is revenge time. So we're in between the incoming tow going. Nothing's really going on. None of the bait rods are getting hit. Casted the plug a few times, tried to get a zero mackerel or jack, but not much going on. So what better time to make a shark rig? So I'm just pulling out some wire right now. Gonna do about six feet of wire. Some American fishing wire. Trusty Mustad Demon Circle Hook. And you guys can actually save 20% off all Mustad products as well as Tough Line products. Use my code LANDSHARK, link below. Shark's got some pretty gnarly teeth, so you gotta have really thick wire or they will cut through it or they'll kink it, actually. 
Those little wire twists prevent the wire from uh, cinching down and it keeps it locked in place. The moment we've been waiting for all day. Time to get revenge on the bridge monster. They've terrorized us all day. Now it's our turn. So 16-0 Mustad Demon Circle. Look at that. Nice big bait. All right, guys, it's time. Mr. Jack Carell is going to go meet his maker. Is it small? Oh, no, he's decent. Yeah, he's... Here we go, here we go. Let's go, baby. Gonna let him really eat it, you know? Ah, he dropped it, see? Dropped it again. He's on it. There it is, now we... <laughs> oh no, there's the power line. Oh no, he's on the power line. We need him to go the other way. Shoot, man. Go the other way, bull shark. Come this way. There's that power line right there and my line is on the other side of him. It was a big bait, so it took him a while to eat it. Not good. So I'm trying to loosen up on him to see if he'll swim this way to the right a little bit. We're gonna get him. Today has been a long, laborious day with a lot of mishaps, but I think we're gonna trick this bull shark into coming this side. He's coming this way, isn't he? I don't feel myself rubbing on the piling, so I think he's coming this way. Good thing we got a 200 pound test, mono. Sounds like that? Yes, sir. Woo! I, I like that fight, man. Yeah? Big, big boys out here. <laughs> now my battle, I think he's off the power line. Now I just gotta get him on this side of it, lock the drag up and make sure he doesn't go back out there. But I can see him on top out there. You see that lobster trap? I think I'm above it, huh? Yep. This doesn't get your blood pumping. I don't know what will. The fact that I'm on the side of the road right now, connected to the apex predator of the sea, I'm gonna take him home for dinner. Cars behind me driving on the bridge in the Keys. Beautiful day out here. It's just crazy. I'm on that crack trap now. That's not healthy. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Today, if something can go wrong, it's gonna go wrong. So I got him out of the power line, basically. And now he's wrapped up along that crab trap right there, which I had no intention of him doing so, but it just happened. He just swam right through it. So hopefully he just breaks free. Here's the scoop, guys. The last shark broke us off on either the lobster trap or the buoy. So I just walked back to our base camp with Chad and them about a mile away. And we're gonna give this another go. It's happening today. We just gotta put in the time and uh, it's gonna happen. Yep. Come here. You are not going under the bridge, you. All right, here we go.
Damn, dude, these things are ripping today, Dennis. Ripping! Don't go past the power line this time, please. Oh my, I got like, no joke, probably 40 pounds of drag on this fish right now. Did not want him to go past the power lines. So I just put the freaking, put it all the way in full and just crank down that drag as much as possible. We got one angry bull shark on the other end. Whoa! Turn this way, buddy. Turn this way. Come on. Well, we defeated the bull. Now it's just getting him to the other end of the bridge. I got to get his head turned that way so he swims to shore, which he does not seem to want to do. Here he goes, Dennis. We got our puppy walking the right way. All right, we're moving along now. Wow, we only got a mile and a half to go. Thank God for friends is all I'm going to say. So the boys, we originally were going to beach this shark on the south end of the bridge. But the way that he was hooked, he did not want to swim. Thank you. He did not want to swim, it, swim any direction but north. And Dennis and I tried for probably 15 minutes to try to get him to go that way. I'd make it 100 feet and then he would turn around. Make it 100 feet and then he would turn around. We were basically just losing ground. So I went from that side of the bridge to this side of the bridge. Um, yeah, this is gonna be the best tasting bull shark of my life, regardless of what it tastes like. This victory's gonna be sweet. I got it. You got it? Oh, sh no, I'm good. Yeah. We made it to where we're gonna land the bull shark, and there's this little cutout in the seawall right here. I'm gonna put a tail rope on him. End this life very quickly and humanely so it doesn't suffer. Oh shoot, that thing got a second wind in him. He probably heard me talking. He probably senses the shallow water in the seawall and he don't want to be anywhere near it. All right, so one of us needs to put the tail rope on. Come here. Oh, oh he's plenty lively, Dennis. He'll be, he'll be calm in a second. He's just, this is the final time of where he uh, is not gonna be moving in the current. Watch yourself, Chad, watch yourself. Mm -hmm. he's, he's immobile if you could get over there. Oh, wait, let me try to swing him around this way. It's gonna have to be when he swings around. Yeah, you got it. All right, perfect. Now it's tight. All right, the boys did it. Thank God for you. I got Muscle Man and Chef James cooking it up. All right, now I'm gonna go over there and let's try to drag him from over there through here and none of us have to go through this sewage. Um, yeah, buddy. Let's go. Hand me the rope. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm on the wrong side of the rope. Yeah! Woo the boys did it! <laughs> 
All right, first of all, huge help to the boys. Check it out. We got our girthy bull shark right here. This, uh, I don't know if it's a male or female, but we'll be able to tell you in a second here. Probably around 150, 200 pounds. And we actually just had FWC check up on us. Everything was, we did was legal. She didn't even have to measure it. This is a legal size bull shark. In the state of Florida, you're allowed to harvest one per person per day. Uh, I know sharks can be controversial at times, but I do this once a year and you guys are gonna see, we're gonna feed our friends, family. It's gonna go to a good cause. None of this goes to waste. Um, I'm about to dispatch this animal. And the one thing, if you ever harvest any shark of any size, the most important thing you gotta do is gut it and bleed it as soon as you can because sharks pee through their skin and it ruins the meat. So the last thing you wanna do is kill a big, beautiful animal like this and not take good care of it. This fish is not gonna die in vain. The Ames is gonna whip it up. Phew. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited to share this with you guys. No one's really doing the bull shark thing. You guys see they are all over the bridges and they're one of the species we have in Florida that is not endangered. Whatever you hear online or in the news about shark populations worldwide, remember that is worldwide. State of Florida has a very, well-managed shark population. Sometimes too much, you'll hear fishermen complain about it and the fact that they're overrun, as you can see. Chad's been fishing the bridges the last 10 years and he says he's never seen so many bull sharks in his life. So let's go ahead and start cleaning this thing. So it is the next day. I had the bull shark sitting in a cooler overnight and i think it's really important with any big animal whether it's a swordfish tuna or shark you want to ice them for at least 24 to 36 hours if you can imagine that bull shark was all tense and uh you know it's given all the energy it's got and you need to let that meat relax so i don't want to get demonetized so i don't show the whole gutting and deheading process i think it would upset a lot of people so but basically all i did was cut the head off gutted it so this is where his guts were took the liver out and everything another trick i've learned after flaying many sharks is serrated knives are your friends this is a 10 inch dexter tiger edge you guys can find a link below and you can actually save 20 percent off using my code landshark and the reason i use a, a serrated knife even when i deheaded it and gutted it is because these guys are very abrasive and their skin is super tough so if you were to use a normal knife it's just not going to have the same effect in your uh, edge is gonna get so much duller than with the tiger edge. Um, this meat is not very delicate, it's really firm, so you can afford to have something like a serrated knife. It just makes the cleaning process of a shark so much easier. And I actually prefer to flay them from the inside out. If I can avoid cutting through the skin at all costs, I'm gonna do so. You can see sharks don't have bone, they actually have cartilage. It's like bone, but not quite as uh, hard. You would think a big animal like that, like this would have a really thick skeleton. It actually doesn't. So I'm going to line my knife up right here and kind of just work from the inside out, seeing where that hard cartilage ends and where the soft meat starts and kind of just go from there. I mean, you can hear it. It sounds like I'm grinding through sandpaper right now. You're going to see but as I do this, like a normal fish, you can see the, uh, the bones kind of protrude out. They don't have that. Cartilage is very different. It's almost like a flat sheet that this shark has. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the best at filleting shark because this is only the third one I've ever done. You asked me to fillet a snapper grouper, I could teach you the ins and outs, but how often does a man get to fillet a bull shark? So I'm gonna try to meet my cut on the other side and kind of visualize where that center line would be. And you can see this is where his dorsal fin was. Okay, so you can see I met my cut right there from the other side. Dennis, does this bring back flashbacks of last year? It's, a, it's an interesting looking animal, isn't it? Like from a flay perspective. We didn't do too bad, so check it out. Now you can visualize it. Oh, don't drop that. A normal fish, a skeleton is pretty flat. A shark's kind of comes up like a triangle. So you cannot go at it 
straight across. You kind of got to go up to that center spinal cord like I did here and I did it from both sides and that's what kind of guided me but that is pretty much the gist of it but as you guys can see first look shark meat is very white. Once again from the inside out So this should be separated. So look at this. That's that shark's spinal cord. You see how you can, it doesn't really look like a bone. It's just very different from a fish. I'm going to cut this into sections because skinning this, the skin doesn't lay flat. I mean, you could see how it curls up. So trying to skin it in one, in one go would not work. And also you see this belly lining, anything fibrous is gonna go. Think of your typical fish, right? Or even like something like a tuna, big tuna. Big tuna is a quarter, an eighth of the size of this skin. Sharks have incredibly, incredibly tough skin. Cut it into more manageable size pieces. So not only do they have thick skin, but look at how thick that bloodline is. That is a serious bloodline and that's where the gamiest part of the shark is gonna be and that's what we're all gonna cut away. We're gonna skin this like any other fish. So just gonna line my knife up. The only thing I'm gonna do differently, I'm gonna leave a considerable amount of meat on the skin because that's where that thick bloodline and fibrous pieces of the shark is gonna be. And I don't want that in the final product. So if you look, look at how much I left on here. That is a lot of meat that I left on there. And you do not want to eat that because that'll ruin shark for you. And look at how much bloodline I still have to shave away. But that's pretty much what we're left with. Looks good. I know it's going to be delicious. So we'll see you guys in the kitchen. And if you guys don't know, one of my good friends, Chef Yames, local chef in South Florida, follow him on Instagram, Yames too. And uh, he's going to be leading tonight's dinner. So what you got? Time because I'm going to do a char care puree. So we're going to take these carrots. You really don't have to do much to them in the beginning because they're just going to get some nice like black char on there. And when you make the puree, it's just going to give it like this nice umami flavor since we're kind of going Asian with this. We're going to do a gochujang barbecue on top of the shark, the carrot puree, and then something simple like ginger and cilantro rice, and that's it. In most instances, you would look at this carrot and think that I was burnt, and technically it is. But we're going to, once we make the puree out of this, we're going to blend it up, and this is actually just going to contribute to like that nice umami flavor that you're gonna get from that char on the carrots. A decent amount of rice wine vinegar, probably like a quarter of a cup. A little bit of sesame oil. Don't go crazy with this because it's super bitter. Some honey probably equal parts with the vinegar, like quarter of a cup. So the wheat, sweet Thai chili has a little thickener. And if you guys don't know what gochujang is, it's a fermented chili with um, it's fermented chili soybean paste in there as well. Typically it's pretty spicy, so I would go kind of light on it, but this stuff is a little mild, so. And then the finish, a little bit of soy. And that's just to give you some salinity. You just blend that all together with a little bit of sesame oil and then it'll get brushed right on top of the shark while you're grilling it. Don't go that much on there. Damn, chef. You know a thing or two. It's like the perfect spiciness. That's really good. So typically with carrots, you, most of you guys won't be able to do this at home, just grab a carrot right off the grill, but if you can squeeze it and it's, you know, you got juices coming out and you can do that, then you know the carrots are done. So we're gonna get those off and then we'll puree them up with a little bit of cream and some chicken stock and we'll be right there. So we're also gonna do a little ginger garlic jasmine rice. So I got a little stock pot right here. We're gonna go in with some ginger and garlic into some oil. So now that our garlic and ginger is toasted and incorporated into that oil, I'm gonna go in with the jasmine rice. We're gonna toast this per chef's orders. I'm just playing sous chef here. James is leading the kitchen.
All right, so we're gonna go super simple with this because you're gonna get all the flavor from the gochujang barbecue. Start out with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. They're ash. All right, so we're gonna go in with the, with the charred carrots. You don't wanna do them all at the same time because it won't get nice and smooth. But all we have in here is a little bit of heavy cream, some water, and it's super seasoned. It's like on the borderline of being salty because the carrots aren't seasoned. That's it, we'll just blend it smooth. Add some of this to it. It's definitely, you get the charred flavor. And personally, I wouldn't just eat this by itself. All the other components that are in the dish are gonna contribute to like the little bit of bittersweet that you get in this. So it'll make sense. Nice and smooth. All right, so we're gonna grill off this fish. I'm gonna throw it on the grill and then I'm gonna brush some of this gochujang barbecue on there. And I'll get the obviously the other side that that's going down on the grill. And treat this like any other fish. Fish will let you know when it's ready to be flipped. It won't stick and you kind of take your tongs or whatever you're using. And if it peels off nice, then you're ready to flip it. Now we'll brush on the not grilled side with the uh, barbecue and then we'll flip it and it'll get a nice caramelization on it once it's on the grill again. All right, you see right here how it's not sticking to the grill at all. That's how you want it. And then we're gonna base the other side with barbecue and it's just gonna get a nice crust and caramelization on it. I personally like this already because most fish just starts to like crumble on the grill. And some people are afraid to grill fish for that specific reason. And this, I'm like not even treating it like delicately. I'm just grabbing it with little mini tongs. I know, I like to feel the heat. <laughs> Makes me feel like I'm at work. It looks good. So this is the part that everyone loves. We'll do the plating. So we'll go down with the carrot puree. We're gonna do really simple, just a little puddle like that. Rice right in the middle of that. Cause this dish is specifically made for you to eat everything together. Grab a piece of fish, a little bit of cilantro just for, to make it pretty. A little sprinkle of sesame seeds and then it's out the door. Beautiful. Give me the first, uh, first thoughts. It's tender. It's um, not like any fish I've eaten here before, it's, you know, obviously shark, but it's, it's tasty. It's, it's good and it's pretty too. Pretty plate. Uh, this puree of carrot is super delicious. I like it and I would eat it again. Uh, two thumbs up, James. Very good. Looks great and uh, tastes great and it's, it's, it's real nice to eat shark because it's almost in a class of its own. It doesn't resemble anything else you've ever eaten, but it still is good. And it has characteristics that I think are good. Like it, it holds together like chicken and um, it has a real full flavor. I, I like when they cook shark here. I'm a big fan. First thoughts, it's super tender. Um, yeah, like my mom said, you can cut it with your fork. It's always a treat when I get a meal from James. He's uh, an expert in his craft. Uh, he makes the best smash burger I've ever had, so it's perfection. Um, so I've never had shark before, so James is um, setting the bar real high. Um, it's really good, really tasty, really tender, and yeah, I'm definitely a fan. First bite, look at that, come on, man. Let's see this, James. Cooked to perfection, firm, yet flaky. You can cut it with your fork, you don't even need a knife. Great flavor profile. And one thing that I thought was interesting, when me 
or Yames, Dennis and I were in the truck, I was like, boys, how many people do you think have a bull shark in the bed of their truck right now? In the state of Florida of 20 million people, I bet you we were the only ones. And I think that is what's so unique about this dinner. Every single person here is gonna be able to leave here and say that they've had it. And I mean, I think it's a hit. Everyone yeah. likes it and you know, it's, FDBC came, like I said, and checked us. It's a renewable resource or a harvestable resource. And uh, yeah, man, I, I see nothing wrong with it. I think it's it's just a plate of fresh seafood in front of me. That's the way I look at it. Everyone's good enough to go and get more. So everyone's gonna be able to leave here saying that they've had shark and as well as probably the best way they're ever going to have a shark. It's really delicious. That carrot puree is fabulous. So thank you so much for cooking for everybody. I really, really like this one. This is actually one of my favorite ones. It's my first time cooking and eating shark like cooked. I, we made it raw here before. And everything together is almost like giving me like a curry vibe. And I think that everything, if you eat it all together, is really, really good. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely gonna eat shark more often. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty good about eating this mm -hmm. shark. I've, I've, had, I've had these bull sharks steal some pretty nice snappers <laughs> for me. So I feel, I feel pretty good about eating this thing. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and until that next video, see ya.